Hi guys, welcome to 6th grade, chapter 13, lesson 2. We're going to go ahead and get started. So, we are going to first find the median, which is just the middle number. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that first, okay? I'm going to put a dot under each side until I get to the one in the middle. So now, I have two that are in the middle, okay? So in order to find out what the median is for those, I have to do 10 plus 14, so I'm going to add them together and get 24, okay? Then, I'm going to put that 24 in the box, and I'm going to divide it by one of two numbers. So then I find the average for the mean of those two, okay? So now, 2 goes into 2 one time. That is 2. Subtract and get 0. Go ahead and bring down my 4. And 2 goes into 4 two times. End up with 0. Okay? So now, my median is going to be 12. Okay? Okay, so now, my, because I have 2 here, I'm going to find the lower quartile. Okay? Then I'm going to go along and I'm going to find the upper quartile. I promise it's easier than it looks, guys, okay? So the lower quartile is just the middle of the lower half of the number. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to put a dot under each one until I get to, oh, the middle. The lower quartile, eight. Now I'm going to do the upper quartile, dot. Dot, 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 and I get 16. Okay? Super easy, guys. Okay? Don't make it harder than it's got to be. Okay? Now, I'm going to translate that onto my number line. Okay? So, I have 12 as my median. I'm going to put a little dot right there. Okay? 8 is my lower quartile, and 16 is my upper quartile. So, now I'm going to Make a little box around those three dots. I'm going to make it a little bit easier so that we can see what they are. And draw that line down the middle. Okay? Now, the highest number on my chart is 18. I'm going to put a dot above that. The lowest number on my chart is 4. I'm going to put a dot above that. I'm going to draw out what are the whiskers to the box and whiskers plot. That's it, guys. That's all you have to do. Okay? From here, further on in the chapter, you're going to find the range, which is just the top number minus the lowest number, and then the range within the quartile. It's super easy, guys. I know it sounds tough, but I promise it gets easier. Okay? We're going to do this one more time. You ready? All right. So we are going to mark off until we get to our middle number. Okay, so my middle is 8 and 9. Well, I know smack in the middle of 8 and 9 is 8 and a half. So over here, I'm going to write my median. It's going to be 8.5, which is the same thing as 8 and a half. Okay? So now, I'm going to do my inner quartile. Okay? So I'm going to go on this side. I'm going to go do, 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 do. Oh, well, there's two numbers. Well, again, smack in the middle. The lower quartile is 5 and 6. Well, right in the middle of 5 and 6 is 5.5. 5. Okay? Now, in the top half of that, we have 9 and 10. Right in the middle of 9 and 10 is 9.5. Okay? So now I'm just translating that to my line graph. I have 8.5 right in between 8 and 9 in the three dots. I have 5.5 right in between 5 and 6. I have 8.5. Uh, oh, no, I did 8.5. Sorry, I need 9.5. So there's 9.5. So now I'm just going to draw my box. They don't all look perfect, kind of like that one does. Sometimes they're lopsided. Okay? Now the highest number I have on here is an 11, and the lowest number I have on here is a 4. So I'm just going to connect my whiskers. That's it, guys. Okay? I'm going to leave you guys to try and do 4 and 5.
remember the very first step is to line up your numbers in order from smallest to biggest. Find your sector, find your median, okay? Then find the median for your lower quartile, then find the median for your upper quartile. That's where your three dots go, okay? Then lowest number, highest number, and those are your whispers, okay? So try numbers five and six. You guys can totally do this. Then try the lesson check on the back. You guys can totally do that. You're brilliant. We're going to go down and do the spiral review. Okay. So this says, Jen says, what is the average number of school lunches bought per day? Okay. Lisa says, how many lunches did Mark buy this week? Which one of you not? statistical question? Well, in order to be a statistical question, it has to have a lot of data. Okay, it can't just be one day or it can't just be one person. So, Lisa would be not correct because it would have to be more students or more weeks. So, Lisa is not correct. Okay, it would have to be more students or more weeks. Okay, all right. The prices of several chairs are $89, $76, $81, $91, $88, $70. What is the mean of all those chair prices? Okay, so we are going to have to add those up, okay? So I like to do something a little bit funky with the Common Core Math, and I will show you. So I'm going to add up all of my tens with this first, and then I'm going to add up all of my ones. Okay, so we have 80, 70, 80, 90, 80, and 70, and then we have 9, 6, 1, 1, 8, and then 0, so I'm not going to put that one on. Okay, so now I know that's 0. Well, 8 and 7 are 15 plus eight more are 23, plus nine more are 32, plus eight more is 40, plus seven more is 47. Okay, now nine plus six is 15, 15, 17, plus eight is going to be 25. So now when I just add that 25 on over here, I get 495, okay? I know it's a little funky, bear with me. You can totally add it up normally if you want to. This is a little bit common core of me, okay? So I'm gonna take that 495 and I'm gonna divide it by one, two, three, four, five, six fair prices, okay? All right. Six is not going to four. Okay, so I'm gonna extend this out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so six is not going to four. Six will go into 49 uh, eight times, which is 48. Six times eight is 48. I have one left over. I'm gonna bring down my five. Okay, six will go into 15 twice. Six times two is 12. I have three left over. Okay. Now, I don't have anything left, so I'm going to put a decimal and bring down. Now, six will go into 30 five times, which is 30, subtract and get zero. But we're talking about money. Okay. So, money doesn't end in the tenth place. So, we just need to put a zero on the end. So $82.50. Okay. 
Now, we're going to see number five. By how much does the mean of the following data set change if the outlier is removed? Well, let's go ahead and see what the mean is with the outlier, and then let's take it out. Okay, well, the outlier, see, all of these numbers are in their teens, and the outlier is going to be 40. Okay, so I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, plus 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. That gives me... if I don't have the outlier, okay? When I do have the outlier, I have to add 40 to that 60, okay? Which is going to give me 100, okay? So, I'm going to do 60 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to do 100. Oh, I'm sorry, by 4 because I'm taking out the 40, so I'm sorry, that was 4, or by 5, 100 by 5, okay? So, if I'm doing 4 goes into 6, 1 times, that's 4, I have 2 left over, bring down my 0, 4 goes into 20, 5 times, okay? So, there's 20, so 15 is one of them. Now let's see. I know that five is kind of like five cents and a hundred is kind of like a dollar. And I know that five goes, a nickel goes into a dollar 20 times. There's 20 nickels in one dollar. Okay. So, or you can do five goes into 10, two times, that's 10, ends in a zero, here's the zero, I can just bring it up. Okay. So totally do that. Okay, here's your other one. So, oops, sorry, 20 minus 15 equals 5, and it would decrease by 5. Okay, let me see that, okay, there we go. Okay, so now it says, number 6 says, where in the dot plot does a cluster occur? Well, a cluster is a grouping of data. So it's a grouping of dots. Well, there's a cluster. So from 52 to 54. We could also say 57 to 58. But the 52 to 54 is that big cluster. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out for 13.2. Come on back for 13.3.